Yep. I think this is a very dangerous fight for Paul. I interesting. I think he might be making a mistake. I feel like 58, 27, the age is not a factor. That's a wash, right? Experience level obviously is going to go to uh, Mike Tyson. But Jay's got a screw loose, man. Boxing pros have given a shocking reaction to Mike Tyson's new training footage for the Jake Paul fight. Ryan Garcia is following the bout closely, and he recently shared a graphic showing the fight's betting odds on Instagram. It's safe to say he doesn't agree with them. Ryan said, No way they have this fight closer with odds than my fight with Devin. While Paul currently holds the upper hand compared to Tyson in the eyes of many, Ryan doesn't think so. Moreover, Ryan and Paul have engaged in some heated exchanges lately. Adding fuel to the fire, Tyson was spotted in Ryan's locker room prior to the Haney bout, hinting at where his allegiance might lie in the upcoming match. Meanwhile, one of the leading promoters in the UK, Ben Shalom, has warned that as Mike and Jake's fight goes to a professional level, boxing will now be seen as a circus. Shalom added, There's no way you can justify a 57-year-old fighting in a professional fight. For me, that's where things need to be clear, and then the sport doesn't suffer. I think it does suffer if boxing is seen as a circus, but as a form of entertainment, people can do what they want. Major worries loom over Tyson's health as he gears up for the upcoming bout. In recent years, the seasoned fighter has been spotted relying on a wheelchair and walking cane, casting doubts on his physical condition. Despite training videos circulating, they seem to raise more inquiries than they resolve regarding his fitness level. Initially anticipated as an exhibition owing to Tyson's age, the bout against Paul took an unexpected turn last week when the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulations granted it professional status. Prior to this development, Ben Shalom was questioned by Mirror Sport in New York about his potential promotion of such an event. Shalom replied, Applied. As long as it's clear that it's not real boxing, I think definitely. It's a spectacle. It's a form of entertainment. Although Shalom thinks anyone can become a professional boxer if they are talented enough, he finds it difficult to support Tyson's rematch. He said, Vittle Riley is a big YouTuber and a fantastic professional boxer who we have at Boxer. Professional boxing is professional, so there's a certain standard required. I think anyone can do that, and it doesn't matter what their background is. However, Shalom remarked that a 57-year-old in a ring couldn't be categorized as professional boxing, despite it being a fantastic event. He expressed his belief that as long as it was advertised accurately, it would be acceptable. Shalom added, but a 57-year-old in a ring can't be classed as professional boxing, as much as it's a fantastic event. I think as long as it's advertised as such. My biggest problem with the whole YouTuber boxing was it perhaps not being clear that this is a celebrity fight. Celebrities fighting is very, very different to professional athletes. The controversial fight between Tyson and Paul will be streamed live on Netflix as the service tries to break into live sports. Talking about the fight getting sanctions as a pro fight, Jake Paul said, Mike Tyson wanted it to be a pro fight. Netflix wanted it to be a pro fight. So I agreed to make it a pro fight. Winner takes all. Similarly, Tyson's battle with Jake has angered boxing promoter Frank Warren, who calls the bout ridiculous. Furthermore, he asserted in an interview with TalkSport that Tyson shouldn't be fighting Paul. While acknowledging Jake's savvy promotional skills and the potential financial gains from the fight, Warren expressed strong reservations about Tyson's participation at his age. In his statement, he emphasized his admiration for Jake as a promoter, acknowledging his ability to generate public interest and revenue. However, he swiftly shifted the focus to the glaring issue at hand, Mike Tyson's age. Warren asserted that Tyson should not be engaging in professional boxing matches. Warren said, I'm a big fan of Jake Paul as a promoter, very smart operator. They obviously see this fight with Tyson as a fight that will generate public interest and obviously money. But let's get it right. Mike Tyson is 58 years of age and shouldn't be fighting. It's as simple as that. Warren pointed out the absurdity of licensing a fight of Tyson's age for a sanctioned bout, particularly in the context of professional boxing. While he acknowledged that an exhibition match might have been more acceptable, Warren found it incomprehensible that Texas authorities had given the green light for Tyson to compete in a full-fledged boxing match. He added, If it was an exhibition, you might half get away with that, but the fact that good old Texas has licensed a 58-year-old to fight. What does anybody need to say about that? Anybody with an ounce of brains can see that as ridiculous. In Warren's view, the decision to allow Tyson to fight at his age was not only non sensical, but also potentially dangerous. He questioned the wisdom of subjecting a 58-year-old to the physical rigors and risks associated with professional boxing, particularly against a younger opponent like Jake Paul. Ultimately, Warren's comments underscored the broader concerns within the boxing community regarding the ethics and safety of arranging such matchups. While recognizing the allure of high-profile fights and the financial incentives involved, Warren emphasized the importance of prioritizing the well-being of the athletes and upholding the integrity of the sport. Warren, along with 
with Ricky Hatton and Eddie Hearn, has added his voice to the chorus of criticism against the bout. Back in March, Hatton expressed his dismay, suggesting that the boxing greats of old would be rolling in their graves at the sight of this matchup. He said, I get the pushing and the shoving and the name calling and holding each other back, but some of the great champions of old will be turning in the grave watching that ch to be honest with you, I'll be turning in my grave and watching it myself. Hatton acknowledged that the current landscape is one where entertainment plays a significant role. He mentioned that he is aware of this reality and believes that the fusion of YouTubers, MA fighters, and boxers in matchups can coexist within this entertainment-driven world. He added, As long as fights like Garcia, Crawford, and Spence, Fury and Usyk happen, as long as those fights are made, they can stay in their world and we'll stay in our world. Both can exist. I'm not turning around and saying, oh, this is a joke. We're in the entertainment world world. That's the reason why YouTubers have the followings they have, because people want to see it. Eddie Hearn, another prominent figure in the boxing world, has added his voice to the chorus of concerns surrounding the upcoming bout between Mike and Jake. While acknowledging the spectacle and anticipation surrounding the event, Hearn couldn't shake off his deep-seated sadness regarding the matchup. Expressing his sentiments, Hearn articulated his love for boxing, which ultimately colored his perspective on the Tyson-Paul fight. Despite recognizing the appeal and the inevitable viewership the event will attract, Hearn's core belief as a devoted boxer boxing enthusiast overshadowed any excitement. In Hearn's eyes, the sadness stemmed from the realization that Mike Tyson, a boxing legend approaching the age of 60, would be stepping back into the ring for a professional bout. This sentiment echoed the concerns raised by many within the boxing community regarding the potential risks and implications of such a matchup. While acknowledging the allure of a high-profile event and the commercial success it might bring, Hearn's stance underscored a deeper concern for the well-being of the fighters and the integrity of the sport. For him, the bout symbolized a departure from the essence of boxing, which he holds dear as a lifelong fan and promoter of the sport. Yeah, you're asking the wrong guy. I'm a hardcore boxing fan. He's one of my heroes. I find it very sad. But it's a big event. I understand people are going to watch it. And, uh, it's entertainment, I guess, but for uh, someone that idolised the guy growing up, yeah, not the best day. Do you think Jake Paul gets any credibility if he beats Mike Tyson? He's 58 years old. Man. They may say the same thing about Pacquiao, man. What are you talking about? Pacquiao fought, what, a couple of years ago? He's been fighting exhibitions. He's the eight division world champion. He's still a world-class fighter, unquestionably. He, he would beat every one of Conor Ben's opponents with ease. In essence, Hearn's perspective highlighted the dichotomy between the commercial spectacle of the Tyson-Paul fight and the somber reflection on the sport's traditions and values. While the event may captivate audiences and generate significant revenue, it also serves as a sobering reminder of the complexities and controversies inherent in modern-day boxing. On the other hand, former UFC contender turned BKFC athlete Mike Perry is urging Jake Paul to unveil the sparring footage between them prior to the problem child's bout against Mike Tyson. Mike Perry made waves during his recent appearance on the MMA Hour Show, shedding light on his electrifying sparring session with Jake. Mike Perry said, You know what you would see? You'd watch him punch me as hard as he could, and then I smile and then keep coming forward. And he cracks inside a little bit, like, damn, what do I gotta do? Meanwhile, Jake Paul is vigorously honing his skills, determined to etch his name in the annals of professional fighting greatness. During a recent segment of BS with Jake Paul, he disclosed his post-Mike Tyson bout plans, outlining a series of formidable challenges and ambitious objectives that lie ahead. The PFL Mixed Martial Arts Promotion has also signed Jake Paul, a former YouTuber who plans to begin training inside the PFL Octagon for his mixed martial arts debut. Per Jake Paul, regarding his potential mixed martial arts career, he said, I am being so serious when I say I want to fight in MMA, either Masvidal or Diaz. 10 million offer? They will literally hide behind the fact Masvidal will be like you can't even box. In addition to Jorge Masvidal and Nate Diaz, Jake Paul has thrown the names of active UFC fighters into the mix, including former middleweight champion Sean Strickland and rising star Patty Pimblett. Paul adamantly insists that UFC fighters continuously avoid facing him in the ring. While the anticipation is on the rise for the upcoming fight, Mike Tyson has sent another brutal warning to Jake after posting fresh footage from his training camp. Tyson took to X on Wednesday to post fresh footage of him hitting the pads with ferocious power alongside the caption, Ready or not, here I come. <laughs> Tyson has flooded social media with a plethora of training camp snippets, all geared towards silencing his skeptics and showcasing his readiness to face off against the formidable problem child across eight rounds of intense two-minute showdowns. <laughs> 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 
Meanwhile, Michael Bisping, a former UFC champion known for his candid commentary, didn't mince words when expressing his skepticism about Jake Paul's decision to face off against the seasoned veteran Mike Tyson. Bisping's critique encompassed various aspects of the matchup, from the potential consequences of a loss for Paul to the ethical considerations surrounding the fight. Bisping's remarks began with a blunt assessment of the stakes for Jake Paul, asserting that if Paul were to lose to Tyson, it would be a significant blow to his credibility. Despite acknowledging Tyson's age at 58, Bisping emphasized that losing to him would still be a damaging outcome for Paul's reputation. Bisping suggested that a loss to a man of Tyson's age would be so detrimental that Paul should consider disappearing from the public eye altogether. If Jake Paul loses to a... Listen, it's Mike Tyson. But still, come on. 58 years old, right? Stop it. Never show your face again. <laughs> if Jake Paul knocks out a 58-year-old man... That's called elderly abuse. Sucks. You know what I mean? You can't win. The former UFC champion then delved into the ethical dimension of the bout, labeling it as potentially akin to elder mistreatment if Paul were to knock out Tyson. Bisping highlighted the age disparity between the two fighters and implied that defeating an older opponent in such a manner would be morally dubious. Bisping also touched upon the physical demands of the fight, noting that even though the rounds are only two minutes long, they can be grueling for fighters, particularly those who lack experience in the ring. He speculated that Tyson might tire after three rounds to despite the shorter duration of each round. But if you've never boxed or done anything like that, you underestimate how long two minutes is. Certainly in a mixed martial arts fight and you're in the fifth round and you're absolutely exhausted and you're dying and you look up at the big screen and you're like, oh, oh, how long's left? Two and you look and 45 seconds. and it's like <laughs> two minutes, 19 seconds. Furthermore, Bisping pointed out the glaring skill gap between the two fighters, emphasizing that Paul has never faced anyone of Tyson's caliber. He acknowledged Tyson Tyson's impressive track record, including his victory over Nate Diaz, a respected figure in the world of combat sports. Mike Tyson, yeah, he's 58 and the rounds are only two minutes long. <sighs> I think he's still going to get tired after three rounds. That said, Jake Paul leaves tremendously massive openings and he's never fought anyone like Mike Tyson. Overall, Bisping's commentary reflected a mix of skepticism, concern, and critique regarding the Tyson-Paul matchup, highlighting the complexities and controversies surrounding the event from both a sporting and ethical standpoint. On the other hand, it appears that Mike Tyson is receiving preparation assistance from Las Vegas Raiders owner Mark Davis for his fight with Jake. According to insights from Josh Peter of USA Today, Tyson's team has ingeniously repurposed a warehouse owned by Davis into a dedicated training venue as he gears up for his long long-awaited return to the boxing ring after an absence of almost four years. Azim Spicer, Tyson's brother-in-law, told Peter via email, Mark Davis is a friend of Mike's. Mark was super helpful in allowing us to utilize this space temporarily. His team has been awesome assisting us with the best vendors to build out Mike's vision. The Raiders' training headquarters are not far from Henderson, Nevada, where the warehouse is situated. Peter pointed out that the venue is a more compact replica of the Mike Tyson Boxing Club in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Training videos Tyson has shared show glimpses of the remodeled warehouse. Overall, this just shows Tyson's dedication to his upcoming fight. Talking about dedication, it has been reported that Mike Tyson is eating raw meat ahead of his upcoming clash. Notably, after he stopped competing in the sport, Tyson's eating habits became unmanageable. After consuming a lot of drinks, substances, and steak, the former heavyweight champion gained weight and reached 27 stone. However, he switched to a vegan diet to help him lose weight and address some of his health issues after five years of binge eating. But instead of the tofu, he's going to have raw flesh before he fights Paul. In a recent interview with Damon Elliott, Mike Tyson offered a surprising insight into his preparation for his upcoming bout, revealing a rather unconventional dietary choice, raw meat. The exchange sheds light on Tyson's mindset as he gears up to step into the ring once again. When questioned by Elliott about his diet, Tyson's response was characteristically blunt and unexpected. With a playful yet intense demeanor, Tyson confirmed that he was indeed consuming raw meat as part of his training regimen. The revelation prompted a moment of disbelief from Elliott, who saw clarification on Tyson's unconventional dietary choice. About the Jake Paul Tyson fight, Jake Paul has gotten a lot better with his boxing over the days, but Mike Tyson, even at 57, 58, however old he is, he's still Mike Tyson. When I box him in 21, he still punched like Mike Tyson. If he hits anybody square on the chin, it's going to be problematic. I don't care who it is. I like Jake Paul. He's a good guy. I think he's doing good with his boxing stuff. I think it's a great promotional situation for him and Mike. But if Mike comes out and beats Mike like Mike normally does. It'll be pretty tough for Jake. Now, if Jake can stay away from him about four or five rounds, then Jake has a chance. 
but you got to do a lot of maneuvering to stay away from it. So yeah, that's my take. Elliot's incredulous reaction mirrored the surprise of many listeners, prompting Tyson to offer a lighthearted yet ominous explanation for his dietary preference. With a hint of humor, Tyson emphasized that he felt compelled to consume raw meat because his opponent in the upcoming bout would essentially be raw meat in the ring. Tyson's response underscored his trademark confidence and intensity, suggesting that he views his opponent as little more than prey to be devoured in the ring. The metaphorical imagery evoked by Tyson's statement paints a vivid picture of his mentality as he prepares for battle, portraying him as a predator poised to unleash his ferocity upon his opponent. However, Jake Paul's eating habits are also changing significantly. The former YouTuber who is now a boxer is consuming large amounts of food in preparation for his heavyweight debut. Paul, typically hovering just above the cruiserweight threshold at 200 pounds, has recently tipped the scales at approximately 230 pounds, and he's showing no signs of hitting the brakes on his weight gain journey. Paul said on his podcast, it's just like shocking to people that that is how much I weigh. I think just because normally I'm fighting at 200 and walking around at 210. It's weird to me that I'm weighing 230. Paul revealed that he has been consuming copious amounts of food in order to bulk up for his upcoming fight. Typically, weighing in around 200 pounds, Paul has been steadily increasing his weight and recently tipped the scales at approximately 230 pounds, a substantial jump for the former cruiserweight. Addressing the surprise surrounding his increased weight, Paul acknowledged that it might seem unusual given his previous fighting weight. However, he emphasized that his body has responded well well to the additional mass, allowing him to carry the weight effectively while maintaining his athleticism. The decision to pack on extra pounds is part of Paul's strategic approach to optimizing his performance in the ring. By intentionally increasing his weight, Paul believes he can enhance his strength and power, giving him a competitive edge against larger opponents in the heavyweight division. Paul further added, But since this was noodling after my last fight, I'm just getting to eat as much as possible, and it turns out my body carries this weight super well, and I'm only growing. I think I'll get up to 240 and probably cut down so I'm like, way faster. Moreover, Paul outlined his plan to continue bulking up, aiming to reach a target weight of 240 pounds before beginning his training camp. He explained that the subsequent process of cutting down to a lower weight during camp will effectively simulate training with a weighted vest, allowing him to build strength and muscle mass while preserving his speed and agility. He added, but if I'm training for this camp, and camp hasn't started, but if I'm training in this camp at 240, and then I cut down to 220, it's basically like I had a 20 pounds weight vest on for the whole entire camp, so my muscle are going to be so much stronger and that speed will come through. This calculated approach underscores Paul's commitment to maximizing his physical attributes and refining his skills as he prepares for his heavyweight debut. By prioritizing strategic weight gain and targeted training techniques, Paul aims to enter the ring as a formidable force, ready to assert his dominance in the highly competitive world of professional boxing. Moreover, Jake Paul has recently trolled Mike Tyson's intense training footage with a comical take of his own. The mischievous troublemaker known as the Problem Child plays Playfully brushed the pads with feather light taps, deliberately drawn out at a snail's pace, all in jest to imitate Tyson's distinctive rhythm with each imagined strike. His humorous jab at the champion garnered a lot of attention on social media as fans found it humorous. <laughs> It's evident that he still has his style, but it's predicted that he won't be able to maintain it for very long, and his punch resistance is also in doubt. Doctors have issued the legend with multiple health warnings because they are worried about his physical well-being. Concerns have become even more in light of now that the bout is on both boxers' records. Knockouts are permitted. However, Jake Paul's assertion regarding the bout with Mike Tyson sheds light on the dynamics behind the scenes and the motivations driving both fighters. Despite criticism and skepticism surrounding the match, Paul maintains that Tyson Tyson was the driving force behind elevating the exhibition into a full-fledged professional fight. In his clarification, Paul emphasized that Tyson expressed a clear preference for a professional bout, signaling his readiness to engage in a more serious and competitive arena. While acknowledging Tyson's decision, Paul reiterated his own commitment to the fight, emphasizing the absence of any reservations or holding back on his part. Jake said, I just want to make it clear that Mike Tyson is the one who wanted it to be a professional fight. I said to Nikisa, if that is what Mike wants, that is fine, but make sure you tell Mike there is no holding back. By highlighting the intensity of the upcoming showdown, Paul underscored the gravity of the situation, characterizing it as nothing short of warfare. With both fighters fully aware of the risks involved, Paul emphasized the mutual understanding that comes with entering the ring under professional rules. Paul's determination to treat the bout as a serious professional endeavor is evident in his willingness to accept the potential consequences, whether victory or defeat. By emphasizing the gravity of the situation, Paul underscores his readiness to confront Tyson head-on, prepared to assert 
assert himself as a legitimate competitor in the boxing world. He added, Whatever happens now happens, and this is war now. If he puts me down, I can deal with that. But if I put him down, he needs to be the one making the decision on whether or not he can deal with it. Despite potential backlash from critics, Paul remains resolute in his approach, signaling his unwavering determination to make his mark in the sport. His dismissive attitude towards detractors, symbolized by his suggestion to watch soccer instead, reflects his confidence and conviction in his own abilities as he prepares to face off against one of boxing's most iconic figures. He added, I'm going in there now, it's a pro fight, and it's on my professional record, and I'm going to put him down. If people are pissed about it, then go and watch soccer. As you can see, both fighters continue their rigorous preparations, each determined to emerge victorious in what promises to be a highly anticipated and contentious showdown. Make sure to check out some of our other videos on the screen if you enjoyed this one.